Mount Diablo State Park has three species of pines, Coulter, Gray, and Knob Cone. Let's start by comparing the two that you might see together on the north side of the mountain. Darker green, the robust looking one with the pine cones that look like loaves of French bread is the Coulter pine. And it was first collected by an Irishman named Thomas Coulter. And the gray pine, the more wispy looking one with pine cones that look like pineapples, that was first collected by David Douglas, the Scotsman. So we got both the Irishman and the Scotsman represented here. Both did their collecting in California in the early 1830s, and both were famous or probably notorious. The way they would collect their cones was to shoot them off the tops of trees. It was always, look out below. Especially for poor David Douglas's dog, Billy, who probably had to go and fetch. And when they're together, they're easy to tell apart. Even though they each have needles of three, the culture pine is a lot darker, the tree is more robust, the branches tend to point upwards. The gray pines, on the other hand, are wispy looking, often with multiple trunks. A forest of gray pines resembles a drunken forest staggering up an oak-studded hillside. These two trees are both drought pines. They're open at the top, they don't tend to grow in thick rows, and they both have huge, heavy pine cones. And the idea is with a big pine cone, you can have larger seeds and more food for a young tree to get started, which is helpful in drought areas. A Coulter pine cone can weigh up to eight pounds. It's the heaviest pine cone in the world. When squirrels gnaw on these hefty cones, they sometimes fall to the ground. And of course, you don't want to be down there because It'll be the end of you. The culture pine has very nasty, sharp talons covering the nuts. You get hit by a culture pine, it will probably kill you. A gray pine would just knock you out. They're not quite as sharp. A few individuals have serotonous pine cones that are sealed with resin. And they actually have to be cooked before they'll melt and open up, dropping the seeds. Most of the culture pines don't have that. They have the open pine cones, and the seeds fall out every year. But it's a great adaptation, because after a fire, they're ready to go. On the trail to Mitchell Rock, you'll see some coulter pines with blackened trunks that withstood the great fire of 1977. The rest of the forest grew back as a matchstick forest with many thin trees growing close together. In recent years, those close-knit coulters have been thinned out by beetle infestations. If you hike on the Knobcone Point Road on the south side of the mountain, you'll see the park's third pine species, the Knobcone Pine. All of its cones are serotonous, so it too is well adapted to fire. The pine cones are in a circle around the trunks, tightly against the trunk, almost like a tick, and the pine cones are closed. Each year's pine cones are added onto the total, and as the trunk gets bigger, it can actually grow around the pine cones, and knob cones are known as the pine that eats itself. And then finally, there's a fire. The tree burns, the, the pine cones pop open, seeds are scattered everywhere, and the next year you have a huge germination of pine seedlings all the same age. This matchstick stand of knobcone pines germinated after the Blackhawk Fire of 1981. It was hit hard by heat, drought, and a beetle infestation in the early 2020s. Aided by ample rain in 2023, a recovery is expected, but it will take time.